she she magnifies it into a voice that's that's just dramatically personal. Uh, and I and I and I know that Snodgrass taught her to do that in the workshop. And the, his comments later about what she was like and how she, you know, stood out from the other students because she didn't have a college degree and she was you know the wife of a of a, of a wool salesman and she was flamboyant. She drank a lot. And, and everybody loved her. She was terribly charismatic. Um, but as he said, you know, he said, talent is cheap. Lots of people have it. I could see that Anne Sexton was really, was really willing to do the work. Snodgrass is a real carpenter, you know, as a poet. And so is Sexton. It's just that she could, <laughs> she could do the fine scroll work a little better than him. I mean, that's what I think. Um, but I don't, I don't think she would have done that if he hadn't been there to push her. And that relationship lasted a long time. They, they, they were in touch practically at the end. So, uh, I mean, I, I, I mean, there, there are plenty of other people who talk about the Snodgrass workshops at Antioch, at Antioch as being um, absolutely critical to their careers. Um, well, uh, is there anything else that you would possibly like to add to that would be? I think you know, I, I went to the Stanford workshop. It was, I mean, it was like Stanford or Iowa. <laughs> now it's now it's different. Mm -hmm. um, and a long, long time ago. I mean, when, when Frank Conroy was, was, was named to head the program uh, and was responsible for moving it out of the English department and on into the domain that it has now, um, the other person who was the finalist for the job was John Rook, who was in the Stanford program. So there's, there are lots of back, backs and forths. But it, has, it really interests me that Iowa has such an investment in teaching faculty. Um, you know, Dean Young, who's been given a new card, you know, I guess everybody knows that now, it's amazing. Amazing story, um, literally. Uh, is, is, a, is a terrific poet and a terrific teacher. People love him. Um, and Emily Wilson and Jim Dell, uh, Marvin Dell is astonishing. Uh, they and they they you know they renew themselves in the work that they do, and they make and, it, and it, it's absolutely clear within the, the domain and history of the workshop that they have to have time and space to do this work. Um, and it's clear when you talk to them that they believe that they really, that they can't do effective teaching without continuing to work on the problems that they're pursuing. Um, but, but they are utterly dedicated to effective teaching. And I, I um, you know, I just, it's so easy to be in an academic poetry class and to imagine this is just some other thing that you learn. And somebody else off somewhere else is doing it and apparently they're good and so you have to learn why. Mm -hmm. But being in the presence of people at Iowa who are actually doing this work and seeing how it evolves and also understanding that you could be in their class, or in Robin Schiff's class, for example, a brilliant appointment where she's, you know, she's running the undergraduate track, but she's also teaching in the workshop for a time. I mean, this is, this is what I think makes Iowa completely astonishing, and so it's part of what's a thrill to me. Well, I'd like to thank you for taking the time sure. to sit down with us sure. for this interview. I'm delighted. I hope it, uh, I hope it does what we need it to do. Thank you very Thanks much. For it. Yeah.